Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to explore the world of 3D connection and how their innovative devices can revolutionize your 3D modeling workflow. I will be illustrating the products while designing a chess set. If you're a cat enthusiast, 3D artist, or just curious about the latest tech, this video is for you. Let's dive in. So what is 3D Connection? 3D Connection is a company that specializes in creating advanced 3D navigation devices for professionals in various industries, such as architecture, engineering, and design. Their products are designed to enhance productivity, precision, and comfort while working with 3D applications. So I get um, two screens now for the video. The one screen is um, the uh, computer-aided design app Onshape and the background, so to say. And there's that chess piece, the king, modeled. And then I overlap that with that screen here on um, where you see my all my hands and the different devices from 3D Connection. So um, this is the Space Mouse Enterprise and there are well plenty of keys on this. I'll start with one here at the bottom left, this one. It's the menu button and that opens uh, a menu to manipulate well all devices that are connected. So let's start with that just for naming purposes as well. So this is the Space Mouse Enterprise. Here on the right, that's the Cat Mouse Pro Wireless. This keyboard is the Keyboard Pro. And um, the additional part to that is the numpad right here. So um, the keyboard and the numpad are separated, separated entities and you can move them around. You could place them on the right of the keyboard as well. I like the, I like the numpad here on the left side of the Space Mouse Enterprise, so my hand can just go over here. Um, and now let's have a look at manipulating the view with the 3D mouse here. So we got this knob here and you can pull, push, rotate that and let's see what that does. For example, I take this now here between my two fingers and, and pull that to the right. That's like panning. Then I press down on it, panning down and then, or up, I'm pushing. And then I give like a rotating movement and I can rotate my object. I can do that far away, really close. All right, so that's the knob. Then here on, on the right side of it, we get the standard views. For example, the top view, front view, right view, isometric view. And then there is the fit button. Let's say I'm somehow really far away and I, I just press the button and then I'm right back in in the model. So on top of those you got three V buttons, v, V1, V2, V3. And so those are programmable buttons. Let's say that I'm working here on this part. I press V1, hold that for two, three seconds. And now let's say I'm working here at the bottom and I want to go back to that view. 
I just press the button and that view is saved like this. All right, let's move over um, to those two rows of buttons. There are numbers on those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And um, they are programmable as well. There's an LCD display here. Maybe that's a little hard for you to see, um, but there are icons for each command. Again, I press that um, menu button. And let's um, go into buttons here. So you see a list, a long list of commands. We had just gone through those here on the right. And now let's have a look at 1 to 12. So uh, this is a key I programmed or I saved. The S key, which is very useful in on shape because you get all type of shortcuts there. Then there is the tab key, revolve. Um, there is a, a macro I recorded, views to show. I will show you how to record a macro. And um, just to see how to save commands to, to this list, let's change the um, key number two. And um, let's make a numerical pad. So I just type in NUM, I get a virtual number pad. Okay, it's saved. And let's just have a look how that goes. Um, so first, top left, there was the S key. So I am pressing that and you see those commands here. huh? And let's say I'm in the sketch command. I'll go in here and press the S command. We see that um, the commands are contact sensitive. There are all those line, rectangle, all those sketch commands for that. All right. So I had saved um, that numerical pad in the feature environment. Um, I'll do that one more time for the sketch environment. So I go to um, key number two, write N U um, virtual number pad. And again, that command is saved on button number two. So I press that now key number two, and I can, well, let's see, let's say we want to modify this angle here and say, so I go to key number two and write in 68 degrees, and there it is. Let me just um, return to the 72 degrees. So that's, uh, I showed you how to save a, a command to a certain key here. And now back in the feature or the part environment, um, I want to show you that macro that I wrote. Here it's on key number six, I press that. There's a front view, a top view, a left view, and an isometric view. And um, let's go to key number three. Go into macros and 
go to new macro and call that standard views. We can assign an, an icon to that. Whatever, I'll just take this one, camera, select. So that's the icon for our command. And now let's go here into the um, that window and look for under views, the top view, then go into delay. Change that time to 800 milliseconds. Then go to command again. Take the left view. Change that time, 800. And then that front view with another delay, 800, and then the isometric one view. So I'm saving that as standard views on button number three. I close this window and I got that king somewhere flying around there and go into standard views. There is a top view, left view, right view, front view, and isometric view. All right, so that is that for um, programming a macro uh, for the 3D connection Space Mouse Enterprise. So now let's just um, do some work and I will model this king. So the next thing I want to show you is um, this row right here, which represents the commands that are saved um, on my keyboard with those buttons. So you see we got um, 12 icons and groups of four and here on that row we get those four buttons the next four and those and those correspond as well to the environment we're in right now we're in the feature environment let me um, start a sketch on the front plane Press N, normal view, P, hide those sketches. And see how um, the icons changed. So there I got the line command, rectangle, circle, arc, polygon, spline, uh, construction geometry, um, transform, command, tangent arc, dimension. No? And, well, maybe we want to um change one icon so i press on my space mouse that menu button again i'm i um pick the the device i want to work on the keyboard pro on the buttons thing and then um let's say we want to change that um trim command to um, offset. So I write in here off set. There it is. I close that and see it changed. We got the offset command on that last one. So let's just model that king that way. So I start um, here with a line command from the origin up. Then I want to dimension that, so I press the this key, pick with my mouse that one. The dimension is 74, so 
here on my numpad. I go to 7, 4, accept that. Continue with a line. Maybe I want to move in, uh, zoom in. But I'll keep that on, on top of that other window. So go here. Then I want to go into the tangent arc. So I go to that one. Turn that. Next um, tangent arc here. Then there is a line command again. Here tangent arc. Line. All right, go up here. Connect over there. Make that perpendicular. Then I want to go into dimension again. I take this one, go with my hand over here, and um, pick those two here, 72. Then a height of 40. Oh, here, delete button, 48. Ooh. Then that radius is 3. Then that radius is um, 48. We need to pull that over here. I press V for that vertical constraint. And then again, dimension. I can press D for that as well. Take that here, make that 6 millimeter. Press V there. Then dimension again. That center with that one at a dimension of three millimeters. And here a dimension of 12. And an equal relationship between those two arcs. Sketch is fully defined. And we want to model that cross on the top. So I don't have a center point rectangle here, so I'll just take it from here. One more of those here. E again, those two. D. Four. And this dimension is two. And this one here. Four and E between those two here. Now that our sketch is fully defined, we exit the sketch environment and we see the menus have changed on that. So I take the two, go into the solid. Take those two regions with that axis, accept that, keep the sketch visible, and take that region, hover over here, select other, move that to see what I'm doing, go into symmetric extrusion of four millimeters and accept that hide the sketch and we get our king finished so the next thing I want to talk about is the cat mouse pro wireless 
um, you can change the speed of how fast the mouse point is moving around. You have um, several buttons here on the on the right where your thumb rests are two. There are three main button main mouse buttons. You got the scroll wheel. You got a and one tiny one here, which you can push press like that. And let's see what that does. Let's start with those um, from the thumb. There is a rapid zoom out. Or zoom in. And I take the, the fit button here from the Space Mouse Enterprise. Okay. We got the scroll wheel for zooming as well. Sure, we got the left mouse button. And that small one here can again be programmed. Let's say with these uh, four window um, regions, we can access those commands just by going over. We don't have to uh, press anything. We just go like this and we're in the loft command. Let me wrap things up by stating that 3D connection devices allow you to navigate your 3D models more efficiently, reducing the time spent on repetitive tasks and increasing your overall productivity. Maybe more important than that is the comfort you experience while working on your designs. I have opened their webpage to, sh to show supported apps, and there are plenty, I think almost 200. I encourage you to share your thoughts, experience, or questions about 3D connection in the comment section. You're welcome to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more content related to computer-aided design, animation, and rendering. I see you in the next video.